you know, when you graduate. So these students say this. I never wanted to be a business person, right? I just want to graduate quickly and be employed. I just want to get out of the degree. I just want to get out of the, the studies, right? And get a proper degree and that's it. I want to be employed and work and that's it. I want to earn money. But can I please tell you something? There is no difference between someone who is highly sought after in the industry and a successful entrepreneur. There is no difference between the two of them. Because it all goes back to the, to the first principle which I've mentioned. Both of them, a successful entrepreneur, a business person, so-called, you may like to see it that way, or someone that is highly sought after in the market, right? Both of them are able to identify opportunities, spot market gaps, and monetize everything that they see. This is no doubt a common characteristic between the two of them. If you want to be someone that is highly sought after in the industry, you want to be employed, first you must be able to argue and show your capabilities in doing that. I'm really convinced of that. So that sort of a skills is no different from being a successful entrepreneur. You must be able to spot market opportunities, identify opportunities, and monetize the event. Right? When you work for a company, what companies we want to see is how are you able to scrutinize the existing process, enhance it, save the cost, and bring in money to the company. Both of them are entrepreneurs, like it or not. Right? So bear that in mind, I'm not training entrepreneurs, even though part of our motivation is hopefully that during this course we'll get to inspire some entrepreneurs, but at the end of the day, our basic motivation is really just to enhance your employability. Right? Um, and having said that before I end, there's a group of students who did exceptionally well last year and we are in the midst of trying to translate their product into a Kickstarter program. And we are doing it that for them now, we are very excited and you can imagine how such an, um, an activity adds on to their resume. All employers will want to hire people who are, in who are innovative, who are creative and who have initiated like a Kickstarter campaign. So at the, at the moment, with the MQID website, we haven't completely updated all the designs from last year, um, but we'll be doing that over this week. So, you know, in, in your review of that, because one of the tasks is to look at those you know, product, projects, see if you can spot out which one were, you know, were in that category. You know, some, something along the right complexity, but has some sort of monitoring aspect to it or yeah, commercial value. I think that's all for um, my part. Yeah, thank and then you. you have shown the seven clubs um, testimony. Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, talk through value propositions, right? Um, just going to kickstart you guys in starting that brainstorming activity. <coughs> so you know, outside class, go through those two links. Um, you know, one one of the links, um, the design heuristics, it's very basic, rudimentary approaches to coming up with new designs. Now I know that the first stage is obviously coming up with a problem um, and you can come up with your own terms because you all have work experience, life issues, whatever that annoys you, you know, hobbies and all that. So just list that down. And once you have a few of those ideas, start looking through the design heuristics. Because simple things like, well, can you, can you turn this upside down? Right? How would this product, whatever that you come up with, work if it's upside down? Or if you sort of make a symmetric or aspect or element to it, how would that differentiate it? Now there's about, I think, 40 odd rules um, to that. And I find that particularly useful because you can actually see those design aspects in everything that, that is termed you know, innovative design. The other one, it's a it's a Russian, you know, it was designed in Russia back in the Cold War and literally it is, right? They went through a whole series of patents about 40,000 patents and look through common themes in what makes a patent which you know is innovative product or innovative solutions um, a good product or a good patent and they came up and distilled that into 40 odd um, themes. Now one would actually have to read through a whole textbook to really engage with it but there are one or two there are one or two um, more sub trivial and approachable um, techniques that you can use into, into thinking what a um, good design should have. So just go through those two links. Um, we'll also put up a, a YouTube clip on how that person came up with an innovative peeler. Right? So this is, this is a 
industrial design, I think, but we don't emphasize too much on the aesthetics because as a mechanical engineer, you should look at the function more so than just the, the form, right? So despite that, that distinction, he goes into how to reinvent a potato peel, right? which sounds like there's not much to reinvent, but at least you can, you can maybe go through and appreciate that process. Um, been through, been through the value proposition, right? So public discovery is um, is the phase where you should talk to people, co-workers, family members, and maybe it's suss out what may be a potential problem. So things like asking them, what's the hardest part of your day, right? What are some of your unmet needs, right? Are there any products out there that you wish it, it's there but it's not there yet? So those questions would give you a bit of a direction. Obviously at that point you wouldn't have anything um, to offer them. But then subsequently you can come up with designs that you can maybe think back, oh well if there was such a device, would you would you go off and, and get it? And obviously a lot of the responses being polite and more, they would just say yes. So you need to frame it in such a way, when was the last time when you got something of this? You know, for example, chairs with wheels. When's the last time you got um, you were frustrated with with uh, furniture being fixed and that you want to move around. Right? That would be an indirect way of suggesting that perhaps wheels on tables, wheels on chairs may be off good for market. Right? So asking those questions not only defines your product, it defines your um, product design, right? product features, and it also gives you an indication of what your market size is. Right? You're not designing a product for yourself, but slightly bigger than yourself. You're not going to serve the world with your product. Right? So there's a two extreme spectrum. Just remember that slide with the, with the you know, backup innovator and then the corporate product designers. You're trying to work in that niche market of around maybe 10 or 100,000 users. Right. So things like that. Um, yeah, so we'll probably dive more into the market validation in week three or four because at that point we will be conducting uh, a set of question or you guys will be writing a question and going out, going out to actually ask people um, if they were interested in the product design. So we'll touch up on those um, points at a later stage. Just for Can I touch on something as well? Yeah. It's a market survey. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the market survey is right, you may, you may see it as a, um, some activity that is, is not belongs to you because you're an engineer, you're only good at solving problems, applying technical concepts to solve whatever problems, right? But this market research, by looking at the questions, it will immediately tell us whether you are a critical thinker, right? For example, a lot of students, they start the market research by saying, um, how old are you? Um, are you a male or female? You can tell, right? But, you know, so, um, and there's no problem with this question, but how does that relate to what you want to find out whether your product is potential or viable? Is it something, is, is it because it's only suitable to be used by a female, is it a, is a gender specific product, right? So whatever questions you ask on the market survey, it will tell us how much effort you have put in very easily and whether you have put in any critical thinking in deriving those questions. So we like it or not, it is a critical thinking process. To me, it is part of engineering, right? And it is one of the most, one of the useful ways to define whether you guys have already fulfilled the graduate capabilities, which is critical thinking, innovative thinking, Integrated thing. <coughs> okay. So the next few slides is on this, and then pretty much that's it. So, do you all have any questions for us? <coughs> uh, yeah. Where do we draw at the line between like innovation and like going from the already exists? As soon as you think of an issue, you think of a product already exists. Value proposition. What is the value? If something already exists, what is your argument that it like, is still working? Yeah, that's right. What is the value that's worth it? And like, you know, you guys are talking about the design process versus innovation. Now, some people said, oh, <coughs> they, you guys work with you, you guys are focused on innovation rather than the design process. Is that kind of the feedback? Uh, what was, was the know? comment? The, the comment was not, no, the comment was um, the guys was, it seems like the teaching staff was more interested in okay. students producing gadgets. Yeah, than the actual process of like. Than the actual uh, process, yes. Yeah. Is that true? Uh, no, of course not. So, so one <laughs> thing to. <laughs> <What was that? laughs> <laughs> One thing to clarify what innovation really sh should mean, right? Because this work's been done so many times over and over again and everywhere you see it. Right? It's really just a process of improving human condition. 
if it's a process that improves something by creating products, you know, so be it, or creating new novel processes. Uh, I guess. So that, that's the that's really where that, that point is. It doesn't differentiate. You can add value to an existing product by solving some other problem simultaneously. Yes. Then that is innovation. Right? Okay, I, I guess I know what your question is about. Okay, say for example, like, you are you came up with a product, your team came up with a product, you are able to show and demonstrate all the process very well. Right? From the beginning to the end, you guys are able to iterate. But there's no innovation in the product. Are you still going to pass? Is that was that your question? Oh, no, not really. I'm not saying that. Okay, all right. It's like, how different? You're able to show. I'm saying, how different does it have to be to be for you guys to say this is innovative? What if it's only a mild incremental right. change? That's So, look, let's put it this way. This is a typical scenario. You come with the product, and we'll be very critical. And but forgive us, right? Because the reason why. There's another thing that I think we need to, 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 to be very clear. Every comment that we give you. Take it as a con as a constructive criticism because we will try to back ourselves up with a reasoning. If you say that this product is not creative, it's because that we will give you the explanation. All right. If you think that the explanation is not um, reasonable, that is fine. You just need to bear in mind that we represent one of the consumer or the person in the shark tank who is going to listen to your presentation, and we will ask the same question. So, how do you tackle that problem? Right? Take us as one of the consumer. Right? If we say that it's not creative enough because XYZ, take that down. Make sure that in your market survey, in your design concept, iterate it so that you can prove us wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Right? Our criticism, or you like it, I wouldn't say criticism. Our feedback is basically a way for you to iterate your product. I hope that that answers your question. Right? Um, so back to the previous question, which what this student is not interested student is not interested in. Say for example, if you are able to demonstrate all the design product development process, but the product is not innovative, will you pass? I can't really answer that. Right. At the end of the day, your product needs to make sense. If it makes sense, personally, I would say that this is, and you can have evidence that it will bring in lots of profit. I would think that this is creative. If you are if you do a product and you are able, not able to show the balance sheet that it is something that is useful, and you did a market research that is mediocre, or you try to fork up your own, um, you know, uh, market survey response or whatsoever, we will be able to tell, and that has a direct influence on the marks you receive towards the end. So I hope that makes sense because integrative thinking, creative thinking, innovative product is actually part of that development process. If you follow them closely you should be able to come up with something that is innovative. So in the final report, there are categories of marks. Now, there will be specific categories like, you know, showing detailed design. They may just tick the box for that. They may not, though, tick the box for you know, creativity or demonstrate there's uh, some, some stuff. Obviously, there's percentages for them. And the other thing is that um, in terms of finance balance sheet, we do expect you to actually go and get quotes. So, you know, email some of the factories in China and they actually have a software that you submit a CAD file, yeah. surprisingly, and then it creates the tools and then creates the molds and how many minimum units you need to buy. You can go through Kenna and ask, you know, how much it costs to store all this in a container, you know, shipping. Those are real evidence to us that shows you can go and do the work. So, you know, be as realistic in the financial model as well. Yeah. Um, what if your idea doesn't have value in terms of a different way of doing things, it's just kind of cool. And you can show that you have market appeal because it's cool. Um, I personally think that it is fine as long as you are able to justify it with a good financial perspective. Right. Yeah, I mean, see that, it sounds contradictory because you just say it's, it's what, no novelty, yeah, but true. then there's a market for it. Well, if there's a market that's for it, then that's fine. It's right? novel because it's different. That's as yeah. a, as okay, a, it's it's different, different, but it's different, different, it's different, different purpose. Okay, it, it, that's fair, fair enough. But yeah. is it different enough to, to make someone to have a market? That's right. To have a niche market, right? So, say for example, right? Um, this one idea that can help you guys to think about product because I know many of you will try to be struggling, right? Try to find out the, the product. What product can I can I actually come up with? Target segments, right? Because he mentioned this. I just want to give you guys some ideas, right? So. 
What about kids tying shoelaces? This is how my product development thinking will makes me think, right? It is my whole thinking process that I'm sharing up with you guys. So you have a, something that is already exists for the general public. Something like what you have said, right? A product. But it's just a, some slight change to basically serve a subpopulation group. Uh, what is a subpopulation group? It could be someone who has problem with walking. It could be someone who is still very young or between the age group of 8 years old to 12 years old. And in this particular niche market group, somehow because of their development is different from the rest of the people as they grow older. These are the things that you can think of. But to answer your question, as long as it targets a market group, you are able to justify that there is a financial credibility for the product, it will be a good product. Right. Um, yeah, We'll tell you after week, we'll tell next you after week. Because then you, you go through your MQRD website and then you can see through. 